Hello everyone, I'm Katrina Parker and this is the Weekly Report, a look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. Spring must be right around the corner because basketball fans have returned to downtown Kansas City for the Big 12 tournament. Over the past few years, Kansas City has played host to this premier sports event. It's all happening at the Sprint Center. And stay tuned, more championship basketball action is on its way too, including the NCAA Midwest Regional Tournament for Women. For the first time in more than 30 years, a new convention hotel is starting construction downtown. And if you've been downtown lately, you've probably noticed a whole lot of equipment and materials showing up to the site. Lowe's Hotels is building the new 800-room hotel at 16th and Wyandotte. It will feature meeting spaces, restaurants, and a connecting walkway to Bartle Hall. So I appreciate everything that our folks in the uh, hospitality industry have done for this city and what you're continuing to do because without your efforts we wouldn't be anywhere and bringing Lowe's into the fold and other things coming into the fold just makes us all richer and better for it. This project is a shining example of what we can achieve when we remember one very basic thing. If we're not working together we're fighting and if we're fighting we're not accomplishing. So I think when you look around Kansas City today you know that we've been working together and not fighting and that is a tribute to the quality of people in the city, the quality of leadership in the city manager's office, the quality of the partners that we choose to associate with, and the quality of the people sitting in this room and other rooms like this that are committed to making Kansas City the absolute best place possible. The hotel is expected to open in spring of 2020. Construction projects funded by the $800 million voter-approved GoKC bonds are moving ahead as well. You can find out all about these projects on our website at kcmo.gov slash GoKC. Last week, we held another groundbreaking. This time, it was the Dodson Industrial District Levy Project. Here's a report about it from KC Water, followed by more news from other city departments. With the turn of a shovel, businesses and homes in South Kansas City are one step closer to greater flood protection. This was the scene last summer near 85th and Hickman Mills Drive after several inches of rain sent the Blue River over its banks, flooding streets and businesses. On March 2nd, federal and city leaders broke ground on the fifth and final phase of the Dodson Industrial Flood Protection Project. It's been a long time in the coming. It's going to protect 30 important businesses in Kansas City and provide jobs for a lot of our people. So we're looking forward to the construction to begin and uh, in a couple years we'll, we'll be ready for that next 500 year storm that comes our way. This project is funded in part with GO Bonds Kansas City voters approved last April. The remaining funding was secured with the help of Kansas City's congressional delegation with support from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. When Mayor James called me and said, look, uh, we're going to put these GO bonds up on, on the ballot, and if we are able to get them approved, is that going to help? And I said, if, if we're able to pass uh, GO bonds in Kansas City, we're going to move up to the top of the line because most communities don't have the matching dollars that are required for the Corps of Engineers to step in. So right now, uh, Kansas City is probably one of the cities going, that is going to uh, benefit the most because of all of the uh, money we have available in terms of the federal and the local match. Most cities, most communities have not been able to do this, so I hope the, the voters of Kansas City feel really good about what they've been able to do. This is the second large flood control project funded by the bonds. The first is along Turkey Creek. Both of these have been a long time coming. And these are long-term, decades-long projects that we've been working on on an incremental basis as we captured money uh, out of the existing revenue. So this allows us to accelerate it, get these projects done, and, and expand the flood protection for these residents and for these businesses that have been down here for decades. Um, Work on the levy is expected to be completed in 2020. For Casey Water, I'm Brooke Givens. Change your clock, you change your batteries, and remember, there's no such thing as a smoke detector ferry.
this is exciting and it's a rainy and it's a cold day but what we're seeing is real progress and we're seeing that this isn't just a grocery store although that's important we're also seeing that this is the beginning of opportunities for our community opportunities for jobs opportunities for frankly feeling like we're somewhere that is valuable and valuable to the city folk are very 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 excited about what's getting ready to happen over here at 31st and prospect we have suffered with a food desert so long it's great to know that in the near future it will be resolved. If not for the city of Kansas City, Missouri, we would not have been able to make this happen. So I'm very excited. Uh, 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 I appreciate the partnership that we've got with the city and all the, all the uh, support that we get for the city in making this project happen. Now to have the excitement of uh, renewing the grocery store, renewing the shopping center, and bringing the jobs back, bringing the convenience of uh, food service and retail goods back. Uh, it makes folk feel like they're in a real community. You know, I think what this tells us is the third district is absolutely open for business. You know, a lot of years people have said, how do we make it better? How can we do? It's always been a plan. Right now we're seeing action. We're seeing delivery. And we're seeing the fact that that action and delivery really involves Kansas City. It involves folks who are from these neighborhoods who are able to come here today and say, oh, there's something actually happening here, and there's something happening where I belong. And then I think this is just another important step. We've seen improvement on Troost for several years now. I think what you see now is the prospect allows us to be the next big barrier uh, that we can break through, the next place where we actually say, this is a new street, this is a new day in Kansas City. This isn't a prospect that we might have known 20 years ago. We have something really positive coming up ahead. Since 2004, Kansas City Actors Theater has showcased some of Kansas City's finest actors and performers. In addition to their regular season, they will have two stage readings this year that are supported by the Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund. Today we are at the National World War I Museum and Memorial because that is where the first stage reading will take place on March 18th. We are fortunate to have one of the actors from that stage reading here with us today, Cinnamon Schultz <laughs> and Matt Samak, who is the Marketing and Development Director for Kansas City Actors Theatre. Thank you both for taking time to talk to us today at the museum. My pleasure. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Cinnamon, you not only are part of the first stage reading, but mm -hmm. you've been part of the core of Kansas City Actors Theatre probably since the beginning. Well, I have, I remember the very first meeting they had to announce that they were going to become a theater in the first place. And then I've been lucky to be a part of the artistic core for five years now. And it's been wonderful. And what was it about the theater that made you want to join? I love the fact that it's artist-led and artist-driven. The fact that we focus especially on local artists, not only the local actors, but local designers as well. And we try and focus on the theater to showcase all of them, because we have a lot of good talent here in Kansas City. Yes, we do. <laughs> Cinnamon, can you tell us a little bit about the play without giving too much away? Of course. I'm actually directing the staged reading, and it has nine characters in it. One of the characters plays an older version of the other one, and spoiler alert, all the characters but that one do pass away from the Battle of Somme, which uh, historically took place July 1st, 1916, and that's what it's based on. And it's mostly about the relationship that the men form together because they're all on equal footing none of them are officers and it's all about their bond together before they eventually go over the trench during the psalm and originally fighting for they think honor and glory and in the end that's not really what they were fighting for and then you also mentioned that this is a stage reading and can you talk mm -hmm. about the difference between the stage reading and the other plays that are in the regular season? Of course, of course. The regular productions have a set and lights and everything, costumes that go with it. In a stage reading, all the actors are still reading from the script, but with as much acting as they can and we can still show relationships with each other, but it just doesn't have a lot of the same movement. Of course. And Matt, um, The Women is the second yes. stage reading and they're very very different they in are. story. <laughs> um, what was the, was there, how were they selected? Uh, and so The Women, which is a play by Claire Luce, uh, was, has been a favorite of um, a colleague of the Kansas City Actors Theater for a while, uh, who will also be the director of that reading, Sidney Garrett of the Heart of America mm -hmm. Shakespeare Festival. Um, and so part of the 
point of doing these readings is that it allows the company to experiment with plays that we wouldn't be able to do because they're too big or would be too expensive to do in a full production. So The Women has a cast of 35 characters. Uh, and so that is a, a little, and Kansas City Actors Theater prides ourselves on um, the paying our actors and our performers fairly. And so when you combine those two things together, it's a little cost prohibitive. Uh, so the environment of a staged reading lets us uh, explore and kind of share this work with our audience and also gives us the opportunity to collaborate with other um, artistic people in the, in the Kansas City community. And these two stage readings are free, but you want to make your reservation early. Right. And what's the best way to do that? So the best way to do that is to send me an email to matt, M-A-T-T, -T, at kcactors.org, or you can call our administrative office at 816-361-5228 uh, and either talk to um, the person you get on the phone there or leave a message. And if people want to know more about Kansas City Actors Theater in general, where would be the best place to go. The, our website is kcactors.org. Uh, you can find information about our season. Our next season will be up there soon and whatever show we have going on at the moment. The, another great place to go is our Facebook page, which is you can just search Kansas City Actors Theater on Facebook and like us there. We put a lot of stuff up uh, there about reviews, uh, behind the scenes information. Um, we've had uh, pieces that have been written by our designers about their process for how they design and why things look a certain way, um, along with photos and kind of whatever the exciting things that we're up to at any given point in time. So Great. That's a little behind the scenes. Yeah. Yes. Things. Well, thank you so much for taking time to talk to us about Kansas City Actress Theater and also about your stage readings. Mm -hmm. Thank well, you. Thanks for having us. The Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund supports local nonprofits that bring cultural, social, educational, and recreational activities to our area. To learn about additional upcoming events, visit kcmo.gov slash ntdf. The Kansas City Aviation Department has partnered with Variety KC to install signs featuring photos of handicapped children on parking signs to remind drivers the importance of these reserved parking spaces. The signs are a gentle reminder for non-disabled drivers to keep it free, think of me. This effort will not only make parking easier for those who need it, it will free up KCI Airport Police by reducing the number of tickets issued. I think most people park in a handicap spot. Um, they don't think what they're doing. It's not an intentional, I'm trying to take this away from someone else. That's not the intent, but I believe it's just not top of mind and when you see a picture of a child with it with their crutches or in their wheelchair I think that makes it more human and it makes it more like oh there's really a person behind that parking space and I want to make sure I keep it empty now and I think that will reduce the fines and it will also give the airport police more time to do the jobs they're really there to do. The city plans to install additional signage at other city-owned facilities to remind drivers of the importance of keeping the spaces available for those who need it most.
On April 3rd, the one cent capital sales tax, more commonly known as the PIAC tax, will be on the ballot. The capital improvement sales tax was first approved by voters in 1983. If renewed, the sales tax would provide approximately $70 million annually for street resurfacing and neighborhood projects. And there are two new features. This time, the renewal would be for 20 years instead of 10 years, and the renewal would allow the city to set aside some money to help the state of Missouri replace the Buckle Neal Bridge. For more information about the ordinance, visit kcmo.gov vote. Well, that does it for this edition of The Weekly Report. To view this program again or other Channel 2 videos, go to kcmo.gov slash channel 2. That page has a link to our YouTube channel and all of our great programs for viewing on demand. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Petrina Parker. We'll see you next time.